Where do you see yourself in five years? In an interview, it's likely that you could be asked this question. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly how you should answer the question, where do you see yourself in five years? Hey everybody, it's Brian from Life After Layoff, and today I wanna to share with you how to answer the interview question, where do you see yourself in five years? Now as a corporate recruiter and an HR professional with over 20 years of experience interviewing and hiring thousands of people in some of the world's largest, most well-known companies, I've been on some interview panels that have actually asked this question, and I know why hiring managers ask the question to begin with. So I wanna demystify what it is exactly that we're looking for, and then how to position yourself to answer it in the most effective manner. And I'm also gonna give you some suggestions on what not to say when you're answering that question. But before you get too far into it, if you're interested in more videos just like this one directly from a corporate recruiter, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future posts. All right, so why do we ask the question to begin with? Now, admittedly, I rarely ask this question when I'm interviewing somebody because Statistically speaking, most people are not in the same job in five years, let alone the same company. So for me, the recruiter, it's not really as relevant. However, a hiring manager may feel differently and might ask you this question, and there's some reasons why. Keeping in mind that each question is designed to assess a certain competency or learn a specific thing about you as the job seeker. So one reason might be to attempt to measure the candidate's motivation and future career goals to ensure that they line up with the role or the organization's values. Now, what do we mean by that? So in other words, if you say that you really wanna make an impact on the not-for-profit space and you're interviewing for a big tech or big manufacturing firm, might not be the greatest fit. The second reason might be to ensure you're realistic have direction and are motivated. So in other words, if you're interviewing for a Fortune 100 company and you say after three years you're expecting to be the CEO, it's a clear indicator that you're probably not based in reality. Or at the very least, you're setting yourself up for some colossal disappointment in your career. The third reason may be to ensure that your career goals align with what the hiring manager's vision for the position is to begin with. For example, say you're interviewing for a company that's very focused on R&D and you'd be working in a lab setting and you come in saying you're much more comfortable working on a plan floor. Realistically, you're probably not going to be very happy with the type of work that you'd be doing over the long term. And in a lot of cases, a hiring manager may actually have a goal for the position. Maybe it's a developmental role, entry level typically does this, where they're looking to groom somebody over a three to five year period to hopefully take on more responsibility, maybe in the form of supervision or a management position. And if you come in saying that you're really not interested in that career path and you're interested in doing something completely different, it may be an indicator to the hiring manager that you wouldn't be a good long-term fit. And I will also say that there's some advice going around about answering this question in a list format or having an outline of what you hope to accomplish each year until you hit the five year mark. And while that may be okay to answer it that way, it's really not gonna move the needle. Purpose of this question is for the hiring manager to assess whether or not you're the right fit for this position over the long term. Not necessarily for you to create your own onboarding plan and five-year strategy. So instead, I recommend that you focus on what you hope to accomplish at the end of that five-year period, and hopefully it's directly related to your career goals and what the company is looking for long term. So how do you answer this question? In general, you wanna be honest, you wanna be true to your career aspirations and make sure that the company is actually a good fit for you because again, as a free agent, we're assessing the company as much as they're assessing us. We wanna make sure that we're making the right decisions for our own career. But we also need to make sure that we're meeting the company's expectations if we're serious about getting that job. We also wanna show that we've got passion for the career path that we're on and hopefully that relates to the job that you're interviewing for and that you're interested in continuing to grow. And if you're somebody who's not passionate about the type of work that you're interviewing for, would you really blame the employer for determining that you're not the best fit for their opportunity? So for this example, let's suppose that you're interviewing for a field service engineer and the hiring manager asks the question, where do you see yourself in five years? You might answer it like this. I'm passionate about field service engineering and providing high levels of support. My goal in five years is to have mastered increasingly complex equipment installations, potentially being able to lead a major project or even a team of engineers. An answer like this shows that you're engaged in the type of work that you're doing and that you have an eye for advancement in that organization. And in general, we need to be honest with the employer. If you wanna eventually lead a team, say so. In the next five years, I hope to establish myself as a trusted member of the team, adding value beyond the scope of my role, all the while building credibility and honing my leadership skills so I can position myself to take on a role with more responsibility. Ideally, I'd like to see myself considered for a promotion into a management role at the end of the five years. So hopefully that makes sense to you on how you should answer the question by maintaining positivity, linking it to the job that you're interviewing for, 
and staying true to your own career aspirations. All right, so now that we know what a good answer looks like, how about how you shouldn't answer this question? So going back to this field service interview, what if we said it in a different way? If you said that in five years, you're hoping to have your real estate license and selling luxury properties in Miami, the company might rightly feel that you're not a good long-term fit for the role because your interests aren't aligned. Similarly, you may not want to disclose your intentions of day trading and exiting the workforce as a millionaire by the age 30, even if it's true. And of course, you don't want to tell the hiring manager that you intend to have their job in five years because that can be pretty off-putting. Another way not to answer is to say, well, I haven't really put much thought into it. Because if you haven't put that much thought into your career, the company's gonna wonder whether or not you're very engaged to begin with. And that's not a great look when you're trying to convince a hiring manager that you're the best fit for the job. Or avoid saying things like, I could do this thing, or I could do this thing, or I could do this thing, or even potentially this thing. Because all that shows is that you're not very focused and you don't really truly know what you want in your career. And that's generally not an attractive trait to a hiring manager. They wanna see that you have an idea of where you wanna go so that they can assess whether or not you'd be a good fit for their specific opportunity. And the last way that I wouldn't answer this question is to say, I'll do whatever it is that you want me to do. Because honestly, that's not you taking ownership in your career and acting like a free agent. Remember, interviewing is a lot like a romantic relationship. A potential serious partner doesn't wanna feel like you're just interested in a one night stand. They wanna know that there's a solid future if they stick with you. And as a free agent, or the CEO of your career, you wanna make sure that you're assessing them just as much as they're assessing you and to ensure that that's the right opportunity to get you where you wanna go in your career as well. So as always, this is a mutual back and forth dialogue where both parties are assessing the right fit for each other. So hopefully this helps clarify how to answer these questions. And if you're actively interviewing, make sure you check out my playlist on how to answer other common interview questions. But if you need more help, that's actually something that I specialize in. I've got a website called a lifeafterlayoff.com and it's loaded with tips and tricks all from an insider's perspective. And I drop some of my deepest and most intimate knowledge in the form of some training courses. There's Resume Rocket Fuel, which teaches you how to write a resume from scratch. That's gonna give you the best chance of getting those recruiters to call you. If you're actively interviewing, there's also the Ultimate Job Seeker Bootcamp, which is gonna teach you how to get through each stage of that interview to ultimately land your dream offer. And if you're somebody that's struggling to get interviews, you might wanna check out my Unlocking LinkedIn course, which teaches you how to get the recruiter to actually start to come and find you, and also how to unlock that hidden job network. And finally, I do offer some private one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. For those of you who need a little bit more personalized help, you can reach me through my website for that. Hey, happy job hunting, and as always, we'll see you on the next one.